It's like if Bill Burr Philadelphia was an audition set. That's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because Def Jam made your career. Bill Burr Philadelphia was a one-off that got captured on camera and then blew the fuck up. Yeah. That's right. He just thought, uh, this is the set. I'm in it. Let's get the fuck out. Bernie's like, this makes or breaks my career. People are bombing. Fuck everything. This is what I'm going to do for five minutes. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy to me. Just call the audible on the biggest moment of your career and say, this is what it is, and then bury it. Yes, and some and both of those had this something in common, which is not comfortable, feeling attacked, not yeah. happy to be there. Yeah. But in control of it. Yeah. And 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 weapons, great, great jokes. Yeah. That's a, a, an enormous, That's and if that's lightning in a bottle, it's very hard to, yeah. it should be hard. It, yeah. It should be a hard thing to achieve. Yeah. You sh yeah. I, I the one where Don Marrera got heckled and he went on and, and he literally attacked the crowd. It made Bill Burr a legend. I, that was when B Bill, I was he standing there. Philadelphia. I was standing there. I was at under the fucking monitor right through the curtain that I was going to come out. I had the sweet spot. You know, Bob will do like 25 minutes in, in the middle because I'm, yeah, I was just a bitch. So then they put me there and it, it was a sweet spot because you take a lot of bullets coming up with a Philly audience, you know, and a Jersey audience. And Bill, I'd, I'd known him, but I, I'd seen, known him f through clubs, but, I, but he got out there and they were booing him. And he's so fucking awesome. His, the way he's made that whole fucking Boston brilliance and he just started to pummel them back and said the worst things you can say every inappropriate thing you could possibly say calling talking about their cheese steaks and the sixers and just you know the thing you yeah, saw yeah, yeah, I've seen it. and i watched it and i'm like this is fucking great fuck and I you was, and fuck the liberty bell <laughs> every, exactly it's 15 minutes he did yeah. it yeah and at the end the boos were as loud as the cheers. I think he got a standing ovation. He didn't see it. Oh. He comes off stage like a fighter. He's all sweaty. He said, Did you see that? It was fucking horrible. What the fuck was that? I went, Bill, that was great. Are you kidding? That was fucking amazing. No, I've he never killed. He I, killed. And, and then he still didn't believe me. And then I said, You're going to remember this. This is going to, you don't know what just happened here. If there's a tape of this, this is this is going to change. You don't even know. And I bring it up to him, and he's like, he doesn't want to talk about it. But it is, it, it was a m defining moment for his everything. Yeah. Fucking Rocky is your hero. The whole pride of your city is built around a fucking guy who doesn't even exist. The fucking Joe Frazier is from there, but he's black, so you can't fucking deal with him. Oh. I've never seen that. Are you serious? I've never seen that, no. What happened was, luckily, I had been booed before, so it wasn't a new thing. So I remember just afterwards thinking about it, going like, why didn't I, I let that fat guy boo me? I let that chick with the weird glasses, like, why didn't I say something? I just remember thinking, I was just mad at myself. So here's the funny thing. So we still had one more date on that tour. And it was like, as I walked out on stage, everybody booed because they wanted me to trash their city. So then it became this thing. It was like, I can't do this again, or then this is my act. This is like Gallagher smashing the watermelon. Uh, that was the one I freaked out about because I thought it was like I thought my career was over. I was like everywhere I go I'm going to get booed. I'm glad that people enjoyed it because I was definitely I was embarrassed that the whole thing happened. Which fucking takes me back to a moment. Cleveland that I yes I was in a hotel room pissed and you fucking knocked on the door and talked me off the fucking ledge it was it was the gig after the Philly yeah. gig where I was like I knew that they were gonna boo me again just to boo me rather than Philly they booed me because they didn't like me and then um, by the time the fucking Cleveland gig you guys gave me so many props that the crowd wanted to see it again yeah so I was asking uh Somebody there, hey, just put me on early. Give me a chance. Just give me a chance. Everybody's like, yeah, 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 don't worry. And then I was in the exact same spot. I go out there and I just walk out. I'm on for two seconds. They just start booing me just to boo me. And I was right. like, look, I'm not going to pretend to get mad because you guys are pretending to boo me. And it didn't go anywhere. And I, I got off stage and I was fucking livid. I remember me and Jeff will still laugh about it because Jeff was like, no, no, I'm sorry. I was like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck this venue. Fuck this state. Fuck everything. And I left. I think I threw a water bottle. Yeah, you were very unhappy. I was I was not happy. And oh, no, because me, I catastrophize in my head. So I was like going, 
oh, my God, I've become the Boom guy, and I'm going to go any, everywhere sure. I go. I kind of forgot because I had been on the virus tour long enough that – um, to me, a normal show was fucking 10,000 people. Right. And I wasn't thinking, like, my next gig after that tour, I was at the punchline. It's like a cozy right. 200 people, and I can see everyone, you know. And so if anybody fucked with me, I, c I could get them. And uh, so anyways, so I go back to the fucking hotel room, uh, ready to quit the business. And I hear a knock on the door, and you came walking in and fucking talked me off the ledge. I remember that. I don't even remember what we, sp we spoke about. I just remember you were very upset. And I knew why. And you were like, they fucking... And I was like, dude, they did it because they were trying to recapture a moment that they wanted to be a part of something that was very amazing to them as opposed to they hated you. You know what I mean? Oh, but no. I, I didn't And I was you. convinced everyone was out to get me. The, the crowd, the show... Uh, uh, not what, what, Live Nation, everybody. You I'm mean, still but, convinced they're out but, to fuck me. I couldn't get on the Oddball Tour this year. <laughs> I can't get on the Oddball Tour and they're doing fucking the Tweeter Center and uh, and played uh, half PNC. those places. What's that? You've played half of those places. Yeah, and I can't get on the uh, – I couldn't get a fucking set on the Oddball. Ah, whatever. They'll have it next year. Because then you're on stage in front of 10,000 people and, and getting an unfair booing. That was when we first started on K-Rock. Right. And you had been not – the XM listeners loved you. But they, the K-Rock listeners didn't know you as well at that point because it was a new thing and you had been away. And they're booing you and you pull out this fucking – one of the great moments of stand-up that I've ever witnessed, which was just turning 10,000 Philadelphia fucking monsters. And they're the worst crowds in the world if they don't like you. And you turned them. You did the impossible. And that's, that, that's like that, – Well, that's I, I lucked out the that. sports thing. There was enough – Jersey and New York sports fans, you know, the Patrick division and, and uh, whatever, the ML, the National League East yeah. or whatever. There's enough Mets fans that hated the Phillies. There's enough fucking fans that everybody hates the fucking Flyers, you know, except the Philly fans. So I was able to do that. But what was funny was I actually, when I finished that set, I felt bad because you had to go on next. And I was like, oh, God, you know, when a comic burns down yeah. the room. And that was basically, that was not a, like, you can burn down the room, I feel, as the headliner. But to burn down the room when there's another guy going up on basically your showcase night, I was sitting there. I thought you were going to be mad at me. And Not I was, and, and you went out, never addressed what just happened, went right into your act and fucking smashed him. Yeah, I mean, again, they knew me, though. It was like the, 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 the terrestrial crowd knew me. So I had to, you know, it was kind of like, you know, they were expecting me to come out. But uh, I felt uh, you know, if that if that show had occurred six months after that, right. when that crowd knew you, that never would have happened. That, that was just – that was a really weird transition time. But what you did with that crowd – I mean, yeah, it was the sports knowledge. But it, it was about uh, the ability to pull that out in front of all those people because it took a while. They didn't just start laughing. Well, you know what? I had been booed before a couple – I got booed uh, on a Vegas show. I, and, and I didn't leave, but I didn't know – the first time you get booed, dude, is fucking unreal. It's like – it's the weirdest experience because you have exactly what you want, the, to the total focus of the crowd, but the exact opposite emotion. Right. I've always compared it to like, you know, when they do the reverse echoes on those Zeppelin things to make it seem like you're in hell, like the echo comes first before your voice. That's like sort of the stand-up version of that where it's like they're cheering, but they're booing. It's the most fucked up thing. And, and I remember after getting booed um, – just fucking walking through the hotel, going back to my room, and, st and I started thinking about people in the crowd. And it's like, all right, Bill, you got booed, but you let that guy boo you? You let that woman with that awful dress, that guy with the big head? You could have at least said that. It was just so shocking the first time it happened. And also I, uh, you know, I did a lot of those, uh, the uptown rooms, as they called them, the black oh, rooms. black crowds, yeah. Yeah, so you kind of had to get, you know, I was in fighting shape. So it somehow, uh, I just remember Opie coming through the, the curtain, Opie and Ant, I think he had his glass of red wine, and Opie just came walking through and was just like, he said, he goes, that was one for the ages, bro, and yeah. just came walking out. And what was funny was you went out and killed, and the second that was done, that was the end of the show, and then they brought me back out for the curtain call, and I got booed again, half clapping, half booing, and I remember there was this dude who ran up to the stage. He was going, Bill Burry, screaming, he's going, fuck you. Fuck you. And I'm going, what? And he's he's giving me the finger. He's going, fuck you. Fuck you. And I kept going, what? It's like, uh, you're giving me the finger. How do I not know? I just kept going, I, I, I can't you. I literally got him hopping mad. 
He was jumping up and down, screaming, giving me the finger. I just kept going, I, I can't. And I kept doing, <laughs> cupping my ear like, I can't hear you. And the guy went, fuck you, fuck you. And it just, I just laughed at him. And uh, that was, yeah, that was the end of it. And uh, I remember I, I, I rode back with Bobby Kelly. And um, I had a fucking splitting headache after it. And uh, I just remember riding back with Bobby. And, and he was just laughing. Going, dude, do you realize you just told 10,000 people to go fuck themselves? And I was dreading it because I was like, fuck, I know somebody filmed that. Because I thought when it got on the internet, I knew comics would appreciate it. But I didn't know that – I didn't know fans would get it. If, right. they, if they would just be like, oh, you got booed, you sucked, you know, fuck this guy, ha-ha, everybody laughing at you and shit. Because, you know, can kind of go can kind of go either way, but uh, whatever. I, I, we're here for you here. No, 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 no. Hey, that, that to me was uh... – that was a fascinating thing to watch because it was legitimately funny stuff. It wasn't like you were obnoxious and got the crowd. Like you were really pounding them like a comic. Like that's what was so fun about it. If you had just taken your pants off and waved your cock at them, and uh, like, all right, any idiot could. But you, Still fucking hilarious though. But you, it would be, that would have been much better, obviously. <laughs> but I mean, that that, that was so, uh, that would have been like instant legend. But the fact that you got them as a I, comic. I saw, I saw a guy do that. Did you? I'm not going to say because I don't want to get him in trouble. Sure. But I saw. Uh, when, if you watch the Philly rant, there's a time where I look over the, D, the DJ going, dude, why are you yelling out shit? You're fucking me up. I vaguely remember doing that. But what it actually was was Patrice was trying to help me. He yelled out Invincible, which would have been a great one to bring up about Philly, which was about a guy who was playing it, was working in a bar, tries out for the Eagles. Not only does he get a tryout, he makes the fucking team and has an impact. Like I could have just gone off on how bad the Eagles sucked. Um and I, I, he, he, you know, he threw that out there. 